Good evening. Welcome to another episode of Moen After Dark. Uh, I am, of course, Moen, and to my left is my Colonel Parker, Immaculate. Uh, how you doing tonight, Immaculate? I'm good, but kind of wishing I was on a beach. <laughs> this beach right here from Waikiki in 1976. <laughs> yeah, it's a little age, but it looks nice. This is where Elvis retired, so after he faked his own death. I mean, that's a pretty good place to retire, especially if you're dead. There you go. Uh, if you guys didn't notice, I pinned it at the top of the chat. We are doing a CFB bracket challenge for the College of Men's Basketball Tournament. Uh, you can click on that and join. The password is Mafia, all lowercase. Uh, we're allowing two brackets. And the winner will get something, probably a rally towel and a shout out. So uh, if anybody wants to do a little bracket matchup, uh, we're all going to be in there. Everybody from the big or the college football mafia family will be in there. So uh, jump on in there. Get your feet wet. See how you're doing. Let's say hello to some people here. Joaquin Morales was first. Representing the Valley. All right. There you go. go. Uh, Dan Miter. Conundrum, Buckshot Kid, Preseason Champions, Nathan Campbell, Laura Weiss, Timothy Green, Grand Dan, like that name, Jan Hulk, all the way from Slovenia. If Jan can make it, everybody should make yeah, it. Yeah, everybody should be here partying if he's up at 3 o'clock in the morning there. Uh, Minnesota Seminoles is here. Coy's here. Billy Tuesday's here. Why? And how about Iowa State beating Houston? Trust me, we'll talk a little basketball. We won't all be uh won't all be football related here, Mike. I promise. Uh and again, if you're just joining us late, Xmosito X. I got you. <laughs> now we know. Xmosito X. I was thinking it was like mojito. Mosito. Like like a drink. Like a mojito. I wonder if that's is it like a a euphemism and Spanish culture, kind of like how Cheech got his name. He explained it the other day, and I apologize. He, he said it was a name he got as a kid. That's what I'm just wondering if it's yeah. a, a slang term for something else that his, Cheech got his name that way. Maybe it's something Are, about him being able to see his own toes. <laughs> Maybe his name's Mo, and he Maybe. sees his own toes. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump right into some questions here. And this is y'all's chat. Oh, Mr. Monkey says is in as well. Uh, let's jump in and get your comments, questions in here in chat, guys. We're talking about everything. Oh, here we go. I want to get this real quick. Uh, Mo and love the Elvis in Hawaii, but girlfriend used to call me Amorcito Love, which eventually became Mosito. There you go. That's a good explanation. Great explanation. Thanks for filling us in on that. Appreciate that. It does make curious. me wonder about the C at the end, though. Maybe it just means yes. Could be. Let's see though, yes. Uh, last Sunday, we talked about the large rodents called Neutron in Louisiana. In regards to this, the nickname idea for the chat room could be the chat rats, rat pack, or even pack rats. Maybe take a poll. Okay. If everyone wants to be our Rat Pack, I'm not sure if, but I oh, get where he's going with it, going out with I that. Cool. A little, little Sinatra crew, the little connection to the mafia. We'll just put rat related nickname question mark yes or no. I like Rat Pack. If we're gonna be anything, it's gonna be Rat Pack. Um, I do. I like the Sinatra. Uh, the end. Know the beginning of phase two. The end is the beginning is the beginning is the end. You know, we could use a little Sinatra at the end of the show. Maybe I'll break into some Elvis and we'll do a uh, hunk of hunk of burn and love it at the end of the show. <laughs> uh, Buckshot Kid was not first tonight. I just wanted to point that out. But hey, to you, Buckshot Kid. Uh it's the end of the world every day for someone, Margaret Atwood. That's absolutely true. Start of the world for some people, too. Yeah. Uh, have you guys the TNT AMC article that came out today? We looked, uh, Nathan, if you could give me a little more information on it. 
I'd love to read it or bring it up here in, uh, on the screen, but I couldn't find anything other than uh, articles about the uh, television show Snowpiercer. So. Uh, Laura Weiss, Texas Red Raiders with the cactus. Cacti. Cacti. Uh, Timothy Green, let's go college football fans. It's going to be another great show. Well, there you go. We're going to try. We're going to try. Uh, the start of transition. Yes, it is. Immaculate is glad to be done talking about the FP format. That was that was just a lot of negative talk for everybody. So it'd be kind of fun to get to some lighthearted realignment talk. <laughs> if you could call it lighthearted compared to the CFP stuff, though, it pretty much is. Uh, Jan Holk, hey, all. Good to see you, Jan. Uh, how about them Cyclones? Now, I didn't see this because I was in a meeting. Hmm. Uh, I take it Iowa State beat Houston. Uh, I know they were drubbing them at one point. But Houston got the number one spot, and Iowa State got a number two. Okay. So. Make it make sense. It does never. I, I do like that Tennessee is going against St. Peter's in the first round. I seem to remember Sankey naming that school by name in his little rant about the tournament, St. Peter's. So. If Tennessee loses that game, that that will be a little bit of karma. Yeah, I, I, I really don't know. I just I got the bracket challenge completed, guys, and I haven't even made my bracket yet, so I don't know who's where. I know Ohio State isn't in it, which isn't surprising. They didn't win the tournament. They would have had to have won the tournament to be in it, and they lost. They blew a lead against Illinois. So I was not in it either. There you go. Uh, Tech gets to play one of the hottest teams going into the tournament. Uh, again, I don't know who that is, Laura, so you might have to... North Carolina State? I didn't know they were high. Okay. I got a bracket pulled up over on the side. Uh, Laura Wise, congrats to Iowa State. They manhandled the team I thought was the best team in the conference. Cyclones proved me wrong. Best team in the Big 12 Conference for basketball. That's... I think they're talking tough. about Houston. And that, yeah, and I'm saying that's what I'm saying. There's the, the best team in the Big 12 every year. That's going to be a tough, tough one to pull up. You know, uh, that yeah. conference is so deep in basketball. Not sure what happened to Kansas this year, but they'll be back. Uh, super chat from our friend Sergeant Pickles. Good evening, friends. Sla Ante. I don't know. I don't speak Irish Gaelic, um, so I don't know what that means. Probably just called myself a douchebag. Uh, <laughs> thanks for the super chat, Sergeant Pickles. I am not wearing green because I'm in front of a green screen, so that's my excuse. Your your wire is green, I guess. So you got that covered. Yeah, that covers my Irish blood. Uh, and don't forget to catch Sergeant Pickles and Becky Go Huskies tomorrow night. Absolutely, at eight p.m. Big West Mafia. I will be there. Uh, they want me to make a terrible terrible decision uh -oh. which i don't want to have to make oh i'm now i'm curious i guess we'll have to pay uh, attention immaculate are the lady hawks the number one seed in 10 minutes okay if, if they don't get it that would be ridiculous like why not now i know the Ohio state women are going to make the tournament mm-hmm uh -huh. Uh, I see there is a possibility of playing Drake. Don't know much about them, but if they keep the offense going, I don't see a concern. For anyone who doesn't know, Drake is out of Des Moines, Iowa. And okay. they are in the next bracket up from Iowa State. So if they both win their first round game, they will be playing each other in the second round. And Ames and Des Moines are just a short drive away from each other. So, And I do believe that game will be in Omaha. So it's going to be... Full and rowdy. Iowa represent. Yeah, everyone uh, but Iowa, it seems. Yeah, well, I mean, the state of I Iowa, know. not yeah, Iowa. No. Uh, and Minnesota Seminoles wants us to get the party started. Party has started, my friend. It's sitting here waiting. Manhattan. Wait, waiting for you know what. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, we're not going to mention that. Mm. Coy yet. just wants to say hi. Hello. Billy Tuesday, I love that, Nick. Love that profile picture. That's the old school. That's 1973 Ohio State right there. 
Damn. Uh, my mowing your stuff. That's right. I got got the retired Elvis look, baby. Uh, <laughs> all hail the Fighting Illini, Big Ten champs. You're right. They're lucky Ohio State blew a lead against them, but that's what Ohio State has exceeded at this year is blowing leads. They got to pull their weight in the conference. Yeah. Someone should send Indiana a message saying um, them too. Uh, Mike Smith, again, Iowa State beating Houston. I didn't get a chance to catch it. Uh, Mike Smith, South Chica Grande. I don't know what that means either. A Grande, I know, means big. And considering it's Mike, it, there's a there's a good possibility that we may not want the explanation. Yeah, yeah, don't. That's better. Just better off. My high school Spanish isn't going to cover it. <laughs> For safety's sake. Uh, Dan Miter, did you guys know that the chances of winning the lottery is better than filling out a perfect bracket? Yes, I did know that. Um, that's a stat they bring up every year that you're better. You have better options to hit the Powerball and the Mega Millions both than pick a perfect bracket in NCAA basketball. So, but I will try my damnedest. Uh, South Dakota State versus Iowa State and Omaha sellouts. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, Iowa State wins that one. Uh, Nathan Campbell's asking if TNT and AMC are not part of the merger deal. AMC and TNT are owned by two different uh, companies. AMC is different from uh, Warner Discovery. Uh, let's see here. I was making Sunday supper. That's why I wasn't first. Good to know. Buckshot kid. Uh, let's see. So far, I'm just I'm checking on the poll, guys. It's looking like we're going to be named after some rodents here. So uh, if anybody wants to change that, you better vote. So I'm going to let that poll run maybe two more minutes. And then we're going to dub ourselves uh, the rats. Uh, Nutria is the king of rats. Yeah, they're big. I know they're big. Um, I know some people keep them as pets, but ugh. Uh, so you think the distribution of the at-large spots for the tournament is fair? Are we talking basketball? Are we think because if he's talking think... CFP, we don't know that yet. So he's got to be talking about basketball, right? Maybe I don't know. But that none of that got decided yet. Movie time in terms of the CFP. Um, they are not even getting into building the 2026 actual tournament yet. <laughs> so uh, Buckshot matter. Kid, can we talk about why Nebraska doesn't have any rivals in the big because they suck? I don't know if I can make another rant about Nebraska within two days. That uh, that might be a bit too much. I, I, I went a little wild on them and on Craig's show. So I guess they're not a rival with Iowa. You guys don't need three I mean, protected rivals now. I mean, technically they are, but in reality, there it's it's not like a equal thing to our rivals with Minnesota or, or really even Wisconsin. But it's just it gets so much attention that it seems that way. Oh, you're gonna love this one. I'll let you run. I'll let you riff on this. Dennis Dodd reported a few days ago schools could opt into a new division if they can afford 20 percent of AD budget to settle court cases. More total cash into AD as a result. So random. He just Dennis Dennis Dodd. He just likes to throw stuff against the wall. I mean, maybe there's something to it, but it's just. Quite a random quote from him. Um, let's see how that goes. My, my opinion is a lot of this talk is going to kind of become a little less extreme in the future. Um, a lot of the talk about all these big numbers for student athletes becoming employees. Well, that's for certain sports. And if they get too big, other sports are all going to go down the drain. So you're going to find out that once these students start to become employees, they want to start having unions, and that means a vote. The student athletes in the money sports are going to be outnumbered in that vote by all the rest. And you're going to start to see that there's some division in those ranks. So I know how the talking's going right now, and maybe 
you know, whatever happens. But I tend to think this is going to get moderated down once a whole lot of student athletes realize this could cost them not just their chance to play their sport that they love, but their scholarship, which some of them depend upon to go to those schools. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm just I'm not going to be quoting Dennis Dodd on that, though. Yeah, that's that's different. I, I Dennis Dodd sometimes you're right, he's a poo flinger. Ducklings <laughs> is poo. And then if he misses, he just casually deletes it later. Like, yeah. like it, no, it didn't happen. Like, yeah, it did, Dennis. And we can do that. We're nobodies. We're just out here talking and chatting it up with folks, but and he's he's supposed to be reporting stuff. Yeah, I'm dressed like Elvis in Hawaii. Don't take me seriously, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um Although I think I might report a little better than Dennis Dodd. Uh, thank you so much for that comment, Tony. T- Tony Toby. Um, let's get down to a little business here, guys. If you would, could you go ahead and hit like on the stream? That helps us out so much. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. That helps us out so much. If you want to give us a little monetary donation, you can hit the cash sign down on the bottom there and leave us a super chat. We read all super chats or become or gift a membership to the channel. Uh, if for members right now, if you're watching and you're a member, we have a members poll up in the members area to determine the next episode of Wild Ute University. Right now, Oregon State, Washington State, how do they fit in the Big 12 is leading. But Louisville, how does Louisville fit in the Big 12 is a very close second. So we're going to leave that poll up and running till Tuesday. So you guys get your votes in uh, to make that determination on who's going to be the next. Uh, into the um wild U- university ranks so um definitely some different cool things we're bringing to members and that's one of them you guys are going to get a steer which way wild U- university which course gets taught in wild U- university next timothy green just wants to let us know georgia tech georgia tech georgia tech georgia tech that's very nice of you tim thank you sir uh clay johansson for realignment who are the best to add on teams if nd if notre dame and fsu joins miami georgia tech virginia kansas arizona or syracuse i'm guessing he's uh, saying four for the big 10 for the big 10 he's saying two more that you would add on to get 22. Um, of those schools i'm taking miami and kansas god see do i have do i put aside my bias yeah. Bias away. Florida State, Notre Dame. I mean, I know I said a lot of Georgia Tech, but Miami. Um, I'm thinking Arizona State. If we're going to five, if if five teams in a division. Oh, if we're going to five divisions. Five divisions, five teams. Then you you want to get a, go ahead and get them before maybe the price gets too high. But I mean. Kansas is a good one. I, honestly, at this stage, since we're just dealing with the ACC, let me amend that. I'm going to say Florida State, Miami, Georgia Tech, and Notre Dame. Grab your three out of the ACC. We can worry about if anything happens with Big 12 teams later. Because that, that would be one hell of a Southeast presence if you had those three teams down there. Uh, Align I-10, I have been checking in on some Notre Dame fan sites. You have my condolences. And it seems the general consensus with a good portion of the fan base is to join a conference and stop falling further behind. Um, You got to remember something, though. The fan base that has the money is what dictates the terms at Notre Dame. And the fan base that has the money wants to stay independent at all costs. Uh, I, I do think that some of them might start to be coming around to looking at this situation and realizing that it's inevitable at some point in time, they're going to have to make a decision. I just, I think if Notre Dame really liked the idea of joining the Big Ten, they would have did it right now. Um, so I tend to think that that's their backup plan to whatever, whatever other plan people might think they have. I think the Big Ten is the backup, so we'll see. Well, guys, I don't know. We we ended the poll, and we're at a fifty-five forty-five split. So I mean, do we make it? Do we? Are we the Rat Pack, um, Pack Rats, 
let's let's come up with some name options for these different rat groups so throw up some name option for rats in the chat we'll see if anything sticks x mosito x says salchica sausage yeah that's how cheech got his nickname that's okay well, that's what mike was saying yeah he was saying um yeah i know what he was saying okay. yeah well, we'll leave it at that way to go to mike I didn't didn't go over my pompadour <laughs> Uh, rock and rant. Good to see you, rock and rant. Thanks for stopping by the show on Friday. It was good to have a Miami. Fan. Absolutely, got to do that again. Uh, sometime if you're free, we'd love to have you on Moan After Dark as well. Uh, evening all. Let the good madness begin and start contracts to the CFB madness. Yeah, I think a lot of people will be uh doing that. Moan, we should be the rat pack. Pickles thinks we should be the rat pack. Uh, I suspect most fans of big teams don't want Notre Dame to join conference. Um, uh, mm, I don't think that we feel as strongly about it as some might think. Like, if they do, obviously great. I think that they would be great add to it. But if they don't, I think we're okay. And I think we'll find some other good schools to join as well at the time. So. If they got other plans with the ACC and private schools to form up something, then more power to them. If they end up coming to the Big Ten, that would be great, too. Uh, got a message from Greg, the godfather <laughs> of college football realignment. Now he's getting into basketball realignment. Expand basketball tourney to 96 teams so Golden Gophers can get on the bubble. <laughs> Let's go. You guys should be able to have like a strong five players <laughs> just, just from Minneapolis alone. I like that just so they can get on the bubble. <laughs> uh, Dot is a plant. This is from Sergeant Pickles. Dot is a plant from the NCAA to float ideas and gave public, gauge public reaction. Uh, socialization, as they call it. I've heard that word more this week than I have my entire life. The, the, they used it so much and they defined it so little. Had to call 911 on Immaculate to report him for attempted murder on PATC. Victim, Nebraska. Dude, I got I got some Nebraska fans that were quietly sitting in Greg's room to start talking and, and jabbing back and chat. It was pretty good. I, uh, You know, there's a good caller. He was a good caller. And uh, he just, his perspective on things was very Nebraskan. And, of course, uh, Hawkeye had to call in and set something straight yes you did uh do you think all nebraska do you all think nebraska gets knocked down out as big 10 as an extra alignment no nah i don't think anybody's nah. leaving the big 10 or getting kicked out as a conference we want nebraska to do well like even as an iowa fan i want them to do well i just also want their fans to have kind of a realistic viewpoint on what they are now and what it would take as a big brand Midwestern team that does not have a direct tie to the state of Texas anymore, what it's going to take for them to be successful at the degree that they want. They, they need to get over the Big 12 and their history and not compare what Big 12 team is like Texas. or I mean, just, just stop thinking of things in Big 12 terms and start to think you're now a Midwest team in the Big 10. How are you going to succeed? Uh, movie Time Blues. He, he was indeed referring gotcha. to the basketball tournament. Uh, and then we have Clint Moses, another fan of aquatic rodents. Uh, we can we can look at that, guys, because I think Nutri are semi-aquatic. We can be the muskrats. We can be the otters. I think otters are or no otters or weasels. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I apologize to any uh, zoology majors out there. Nebraska's real rivals were Kansas, Iowa State, Kansas State, Missouri, Colorado University. I don't disagree with that. I mean, yeah, I mean, said the same thing. I was like, when people are asking about Iowa and Nebraska being rivals, it's like their rival is Iowa State. And until they move on from their time in the Big 12 and become like truly Big 10 fans, that's that list right there is still who they think of as their rivals. So, I mean, that's that's self-inflicted pain right there. 
like move on, but you know, we'll see. <laughs> Dennis Dodd is genetics 56. I don't think so. I think I mean, Dennis Dodd has now credibility wise. I mean, yeah, there, Dennis Dodd is a good writer. He's just, he's out of the loop now, but uh, he's still a good writer. He's good at taking other people's news and then putting an embellishment or a speculation on the end of it. Well, in that case, then they're kind of the, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're both like to, let's say they both like to borrow things. Hmm. Um, Clint Moses, Elvis is alive. You got it, baby. Hunk, Uncle Burn and Love. I'm fat Elvis, so I'm fat drug addicted Elvis. Uh, so your March connection to the media wrestling, is that a possible cash grab for the Big 12 to stay relevant? Uh, I think he's talking to the media wrestling. Oh, oh, I think he's talking about Endeavor. Is that what you're talking about, Dan? Could you clarify that? I'm guessing, yeah, maybe he means Endeavor. Yeah, Endeavor and their ties to the WWE. Or maybe he's talking about different media wrestling with each other. I don't know. Well, maybe he'll give us another comment. We'll yeah, yeah. More. Let us let us know because that just I'm confused. I might be a little slow. Uh, with the way Texas A&M is making Nebraska their uh, uh, expletive, maybe making Nebraska their bitch. Maybe the big can convince them to make the move so they can do it on the field as well. Um, Interestingly enough, Nebraska plays Texas A&M in the first round. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You can say bitch here. If you Whoever know. whoever's making those brackets, they do have a bit of a dark sense of humor because that's. I mean, they know it's going to get people riled up and talking about it, so they they went ahead and did it. Uh, Jamie Thornton's here. She wants Miami and Kansas. And then Big Ten fan here. Can ACC dissolution talk come back after that CFP deal? There's the now how far they will on. fall behind. Uh, that's, that's what, that's going to be the topic for the next, until however many days. So count down till spotlight. the end of the week, end of the week, the 22nd is the first port date on that. You can expect a big that's spotlight. In, yeah. I believe that's in North Carolina, that one. So I think there's one coming up and down in Florida as well. Too. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah both. That's, I have, we'll have to get those dates sorted out. I know the 22nd is the first one. It's this Friday. So. Uh, yeah. This week's Big Freaking Friday show, even if I'm not there, that's going to be a hot one, guys. So um, you will want to jump in there to, to discuss that stuff. But we will be talking more about the ACC in depth. Um, that's why if you look at Wild Ute University, we, he's got several lined up for how do ACC teams fit into the Big 12. Um, he's done several for how they fit in the Big 10. Now we're switching focus to the Big 12 for a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to get some SEC stuff in there as well. Uh, Jamie Thornton. Hi, guys. Hey, Jamie. I didn't get a chance to listen to your radio show tonight because I was stuck in a meeting. But uh, you can blame Nate for that. <laughs> Tony Lawson. Good to see you. Miami and Kansas are the best of two, best two of those by far. I, I agree. Uh, Joe, again, Miami, Kansas. Miami, Kansas seems to be the popular one here. <laughs> Mr. Monkey says, this just in, Big Ten and SEC are asking for auto buys into the Final Four. We joke about it now. <laughs> but I actually think I saw some talk about that a week or two back. As they've been talking a lot about expanding the tournament. Uh, Immaculate, you do know that when COVID was going to stop Big Ten football when they aligned with the pack not to play, Nebraska was so pissed they actually called the SEC and asked Sankey to play. Well, I can't say anything because Ohio State did something similar. Yeah, it's all right. The commissioner at the time is gone now. And there's a lot of division between schools on that. Um, it is what it is. We're past it. I think that year Nebraska did play, and that was the year they extended Scott Frost. So. Maybe they shouldn't have played. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they wanted them some football. Uh, it sure sounds like Nebraska fans have some love for the OU Sooners. Maybe Iowa should change its colors. I don't you know, know that black and gold. 
you know, Nebraska likes to talk about their defense, at least they did in the past, and they like to call them the black shirts. I think one of the reasons why they don't like Iowa is because we actually have a good defense and they wear black shirts. So that's probably why they don't want to recognize us. Yeah, if only they left Bo Pelini as their coach. Bo was a good or, coach. He was Bo just was a, a good jerk. coach. He was an he was asshole. A jerk. <laughs> he was an asshole. I mean, but they, were, but they were getting double digit wins under Bo. Yeah. Yeah, I think his worst season was nine and four. Um, and some kids cried about it or complained or did whatever. And I guess he had to go. And so did their win totals. Yeah. I think Bo cursed them. That Youngstown cursed. Uh, Brett Taylor showing us three. It's March 22nd this Friday Thank in you, Charlotte Brett. and four, nine in Tallahassee. There's a third date in there too. Um, but it's later in April. I don't know what that is. Uh, Dan Miter clarifies he was talking about Endeavor, the company that works with um, WWE and UFC. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's. I mean, you hate to see him get into sports entertainment like that simply because fake wrestling, fake, you know. But, I mean, obviously, they're going to have to leverage anything they can to get more cash. The Big 12 cannot afford to fall behind any more than they already are. Uh, is Alberts the start of a cloaking to get Texas A&M into the Big? Not directly, but... You know, when you see the Texas A&M AD getting in at Ohio State and a Nebraska AD going down there, it certainly shows that they see Texas A&M as in their their sphere, their realm. Like, it, it could be part of it. For anyone who thought, oh, the Texas A&M doesn't fit in or they wouldn't no, – no one if they would want to deal with them. Well, I, I would – tend to say that that's not the case and that we're, we're seeing that when I mean, that's that's a lot i mean their ad comes to ohio state and an ad goes there that's that seems to be pretty accepting of them in, in terms of you know being reputable uh buckshot kid wants us to call ourselves big rats big rats <laughs> uh i suggest the capybara gang i think that's a south uh south american type of rodent uh, Billy Tuesday, but fielding Yost insulted Notre Dame 120. He did a little more than that. I will. He, he did a little more than insult him. Um, but you can read into that what a piece of shit fielding Yost was. Typical Michigan man. And then Antoine Codes brings up the real question here. Can we be rats and mafia at the same time? Well, I think it was pointed out earlier, the Rat Pack. I mean, Frank, I'm, you know, I'm just... I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Frank, like Frank had some people taken care of. Uh, well, since you're chat, you should be the chat rats. Not bad. Not too bad. Well, what do you guys think of that chat rats? I it's got a like little. It. It's got a little tune. Alliteration, to it well. yeah, yeah, a little, little rhyming scheme there. Uh, Jamie Thornton, I'm feeling my hometown Elvis vibes with Moan tonight. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Clay Johansson suggests three amigos, four horsemen for nicknames. Three amigos. We could just shorten it to amigos. Uh, we might Mike get in Smith. trouble for that. Oh, okay. Uh, Mike Smith suggests gridiron gods. <laughs> I mean, if you want to call us gods, it's quite right. Too I, I'm <laughs> not comparing myself to a god. Don't call me that. <laughs> I don't know about this one. I don't know if we're going to figure that, find that or not on that one. We'll just have Immaculate to. Immaculate sings like Sinatra. We'll just maybe have to let you think about that. And whichever Sinatra kid didn't sing. <laughs> like which one? Huh? Yeah, there was there was three of them, and I think one of them chose not to sing. Uh, Coy, that Greg comment needed to let him cook soundbite. I thought it needed a little more laughter in it, but we'll get him on the show and have him give his take off. Uh, Indiana State Board of Trustees making the tourney is a scam beyond measure. Get ADs off all selection committees. I mean, who? Yeah, I, I get the outside. Oh, okay. Not making 
Bill Black says them. Indiana State not making the tourney is a scam beyond measure. Chances are that's probably not going to ever happen. <laughs> Mike Smith and Brass fans have computers and internet. Apparently they do, and apparently Immaculate pissed them all off. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they didn't didn't like me saying that. That's okay. Uh, Brett Taylor clarifies the joke about asking for a buy into the Final Four was about hoops, not football. We got it. Yep, yep, we got it. And that's there was actual talk about it though too. Like when you, I know you're joking about it, Brett, but there was some at least allusion to it. They were alluding to possibly having AQs in the tournament. And that's when they were talking about expanding the tournament. And they still are. It's just the number has gone down quite a bit. I think they're talking maybe 76 now. Uh, Dan Miter, you got to love Flugar. He is so honest about Minnesota. He is. He's honest to a fault. We love him. I mean, he is still thinking that they're going to keep that trophy this coming season. So, <laughs> you know, I don't know if, I, I don't know if I'd say 100% honest. Fair catch. <laughs> um. Uh, Brett Taylor, Nebraska versus OU was the Midwest game for years. Yes, it was. Absolutely was. In the past. In the past. Uh, Mr. Monkey says, Moan, give me a Kansas realignment pie chart. Percent chance they end up in the Big Ten, SEC, and Big 12. Uh, I think their best chance is staying in the Big 12. I think the Big Ten's a little bit ahead of the SEC, so we'll say... 11% SEC, 19% Big Ten, and the other 80% would be, or the other 30 or 70% would be Big 12. Um, yeah. I think they're going to get in a tail end. Like, they're literally one of my last teams in. They're on the bubble. 10, 35, 55. Uh, the NU talk doesn't sooner in Texas. Good to see you sooner in Texas. The Nebraska talk doesn't add up. They were great before they entered the Big 12 where they gained access to Texas players. Where were their natural recruiting grounds before the Big 12? Um, before the Big 12, they recruited everybody. There was much different rules back then. They'd have like 150 guys on the sidelines. Um, and as much as people don't want to admit to it, the game was different. Um, when you had a body completely surrounded in massive pads, speed was not as much of a thing back then. It was all about power and, and brute strength. And Nebraska just pummeled everybody to death. Um, and they had the numbers that they could just keep rotating in people. and they So they, they just ran right over people. Um, the game changed. They started to use, you know, pipeline from Texas then to try to keep up. Then they lost that. And so now, you know, they're having to play the same game as everyone else. Um, so, you know, if they're living in the past from those days, well, that was, that was the wild, wild west. I mean, it, you could do whatever you wanted. So you know, there's rules now and they just, they got to figure out how to get it done within those rules. Wait, Joe Hansen wants to name us the seven Spanish angels with you four and Becky Pickles and Greg. Moen can be the Red Horn Angel since he is an OSU fan. Boy, oh boy, if you guys only know what I have planned. Um, boy, oh boy. I'm just going to give you a little tease like that. Oh. You think it's been good before? It's about to get a lot better. Custom stuff, custom stuff, guys. Oh. I don't even know, so I'm yep. looking forward to. April 9th in Leon County for the Florida State lawsuit. Yeah, we got that. Uh, let me, woo, boy, we're trying to catch, I'm trying to catch up here, guys. We got a lot. In the that chat. one's going to be interesting if the one up in North Carolina, if the uh, judge forces them to use the amended complaint as their main complaint, because then primacy is going to change to Florida. And so that that's going to become a big deal. Although, I, this is going to get odd. I mean, having dueling court battles at the same time, it's just uh, at some point in time, those courts are going to have to contact each other and be like, what do you want to do with these yahoos? I mean, this is it's going, to, it's going to get big and ugly and very public. 
Uh, Laura Weiss, Tech scored 70 against Nebraska one year. Wow. That's that's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. to, you know, their defense. Uh, Timothy Green, I would just like to say that this is definitely one of the top five YouTube Oof. shows. Always great content and very informative. Thank you guys for all you do. Well, that one definitely deserves it. Let him cook. Wait. Let him cook now. Let him cook. I said, let him cook. That's quite a high ranking right there. There um, you go. You got to let him cook. Uh, Mike Smith, it is odd that the Big Ten has yet to show obvious interest into a Texas market. You don't always want to show your cards. If that is the case, I, I don't blame them for not showing that they want to do that. Although I would say Ohio State hiring their AD and then the AD in Nebraska going there, it certainly certainly shows that Texas A&M is on their radar. Um, take it for what you will. Uh, Tony Lawson just wants to correct us. Nancy could sing. Yes, Nancy could sing. So could Frank Jr. given the song. But he was not. Frank Jr. had no chance. No chance at all. That kid was always going to be compared to his old man. Yeah, he was. He was a. And, and I mean, he was a good singer. I don't know if I'd necessarily call him a great singer. Uh, it's so funny that all the Big Ten fans are drinking the Texas A and M hashtag Kool Aid when they are the ones who love the SEC. Longhorns and Austin seem like a perfect fit for the big. Second best for big. Yeah, Jamie, I know. I know. You think that they're never leaving. Nobody's leaving the SEC. And nobody was leaving the pack for the Big 12. So, I I, I wouldn't put money on a and leaving. And we talk about it now because we're, we're switching back into realignment mode. And so it, it's one of those things that gets brought up. And so we talk about it now. Me personally, I'm not. I'm not betting on that. Certainly, and even if I was, it wouldn't be anytime soon. Um, Buckshot Kid, I don't understand why Notre Dame can't turn the other cheek and forgive and forget. It's called arrogance. It's something they've patented in South Bend. It's pure arrogance. And if you believe that's the actual reason, that's not the actual reason. That's what they bring up all the time. A hundred years ago, this happened. Okay. A hundred years, you, you know, if you go back and look at the history of what everybody in the Big Ten has done to each other, Ohio State lobbying to get a Rose Bowl berth ahead of Michigan, even though Michigan tied them one year. Um, yeah. Yeah, There's there's been a lot of backstabbing within the Big Ten, and we always forgive and forget. Uh, I need to look. I forgot about the turnover brackets tonight. Jamie, if you want to compete in our bracket challenge, I have pinned that up in the chat just for anybody else who hasn't seen it yet. It's at the top of the YouTube chat. The password is Mafia, all lowercase, M-A-F-I-A. -A. If you guys want to compete, we're letting you do two brackets each. So you can have a fun bracket. You can have a serious bracket. and uh, We'll give the winner an award. We'll give you a little shout out on the show, rally towel, maybe some other things. We'll see. Uh, St. John's is number 25 on Kempom and didn't make the tournament. Yeah, I read somewhere that they told the NIT, don't bother inviting them. Like they're, they're pretty mad. Uh, I don't understand the Tamu obsession either. I believe some anti-big people are trolling us. Uh I think I'm partly responsible for that, and I apologize <laughs> because I put them in my Big Ten at number 24. Uh, I apologize. Uh, Coy reminds him, I'm not obsessed with A&M joining, just saying they would join way more than UT would even consider the big. Yeah, I, I don't think UT wants to be a part of the uh, BTAA and, and everything that goes on with that. It's just, you know. They like to do their thing and, and control their relationships. In terms of AM, I don't think that there's any great push to do it. And the only reason why they would do it is kind of out of an emotional, like Texas, they 
Texas was almost left them behind at one point in time. Right. Um, and so they then got to leave Texas behind. And in, in a weird kind of rivalry way, I mean, that meant a lot. And then to have Texas coming in, um, there's some people who are just mad about that. Do I think it's enough to, to push them out of what's a much more natural fit for them in the SEC to the Big Ten? Uh, no, I, I don't think there'll be enough donor push for that. Maybe some in academia and administrators want it, but we'll see. I, I'm just not betting on it. Uh, Moen, do you guys see CSU and Air Force in the Big 12? No. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Big 12, just they're not going to take smaller brands like that anymore. Unless it's like a USF in Florida. And that I'm not even calling that, but that's just, you know, there's a lot of other things that go with that, like Florida recruiting, right. Florida money, rivalry with UCF, who you already have in your conference, and you need to improve that value. So, yeah. Uh, so is there going to be a ceasefire when Iowa and Ohio State play next fall? Absolutely not. Absolutely yeah. not. No. <laughs> oh, he has no man. reason to pull off on that when that time comes i'm gonna have some bruises it's just... uh if iowa pulled the upset as a show going into shutdown mode no but i'll be catching my fair amount of shit uh oh I if iowa wins that game he is oh definitely. yeah i talk shit but i'll get hit with shit too uh mr monkey says i'm beginning to think kansas to the sec is the sleeper and kansas realignment possibilities maybe i can see the maybe. value in it i can see you know it gives if they want to invest in making now that Missouri seems to, you know, looking like a thing, like they've had multiple good seasons. They seem to be putting them together back to back to back. If you're trying to invest and make that a little bit more a part of your conference, I could see bringing in Kansas and then having that Kansas Missouri heated rivalry. That's, that's just not a school rivalry. That's, that's something that you'll get the entire state behind, even if they're not Kansas or Missouri fans. Um, so I, I could see it. I could see it happen. And I could see if that, if that starts to gain traction, that the big 10 might come in and be like, wait, 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 wait. You want to join us, right? Kansas. <laughs> and then so, Kansas will say yes. Yeah. Kansas wants to be in the big 10. They've, they've inquired several times. Um, rock and ramp Miami fan for future reference, reading through ACC bylaws. Again, most votes require a two third quorum then two-third vote of present members, meaning possible to approve some things in theory with just 6.67 yes, with with seven yes votes. And, but the fact of the matter is they, by their own admittance, they did not have even a vote on the first complaint that was filed. So I get what he's saying. Some people are saying they didn't have enough numbers or who would be and all that. And, from a Miami perspective, I get it. And he's saying maybe that Miami was not there to vote for it. Fair enough. Miami may not have voted for it. And it could only, maybe this could be, just be the private schools. You know, and that's what he's saying. It's like on the other side of things, people are saying, oh, who stabbed Florida State in the back? Could just, could have just been schools that are all staying behind that voted on this. But to me, like what I focus on is the fact that that first vote had no vote. Or the, the first complaint had no vote. Um, I, and I'm not buying the whole, well, they got to vote after the fact. So that covers it. No, it's not the, the court's not going to take that. So, um, we'll, we'll see how that goes, but I get what he's saying. I think he's trying to say that Miami quite possibly did not vote for that. Uh, is it true that when Texas and OU joined the sec, they decided to add a penalty for leaving the sec. They did. They increased the bio. It is something exorbitant right now. But the media rights come up in 2029, I believe. Um, and that's when I prophesy with all my voodoo that, that Texas A&M might decide to leave and join the Big Ten. Uh, Monkey says A&M to the Big Ten will be comical. I don't disagree necessarily. I think it'll be a little funny, but... <laughs> it would definitely be funny, but... You know, if they were to get into Florida and Texas, maybe Georgia. Yeah, National Conference. Yikes. Uh, Mr. Monkey, I think Kansas could go to the SEC after the ACC schools. Good possibility. Depends on how big SEC really wants to get, guys. I think, you know, 
If they grab North Carolina, they grab Clemson. If they try and take a stat, if they stab into Virginia, can get one of the Virginia schools, then maybe Kansas would be the the school that would round it out. Uh, people in Texas would think that the Texas tea sippers would be fit in with the Northerners. Uh, Adam Antibaros, I hope I pronounced that right. Time have been released. BYU 1240 Eastern, True TV, Texas Tech 940 Eastern, CBS, Kansas 955 Eastern, TBS. Again, I got it pinned at the top of the chat, guys. I'll make a community post afterwards, too. Uh, if you want to participate in our bracket challenge, by all means, uh, password is mafia, all lowercase. Uh, and then Scott Schrader says, all Texas teams are perfect for the SEC. Keep them in the South. Uh, and that's a Nebraska fan, it looks like, uh, Immaculate. So I see that. I see the little Nebraska on the Texas side there. Um, you know, I I don't disagree with him on this, though. Uh, I I definitely think the Texas teams fit in better with the SEC than with the Big Ten. Just like I think the Florida State would fit in better with the SEC and the Big Ten. And yet, they want to come up here. So it wouldn't shock me if some academia and some administrators at Texas A&M are saying, hey, if, if we had a real shot to get into the Big Ten, we would love to do that. And then they're going to run into some of their big money boosters are going to be like, like how we are. Like, so that, I think that that's the same issue that happened with Florida State. And then the CFP happened. So th there's no event that I've seen yet to maybe cause those boosters to swap like that. Um, unless some of this AD situation that's going on and their coaching situation. Well, we'll see. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, again, if I started that, you know, it's like Hunter S. Thompson says, I started the rumor in Minneapolis. Um, if I started that rumor, I apologize. It's not, I have no inside information on traction to that. I'm just saying Big Ten needs a school in Texas. Texas A&M could be available at the end of the next media cycle. They fit. They check all the marks for Big Ten membership, too. So, And, of course, Jamie Thornton says my response to the A&M obsession is Georgia Tech. Oh, good Lord. Jamie, Jamie, Jamie. Oh. Uh, and then Illini Ted says Texas A&M fits the big about as much as Clemson, but these are weird times. Uh, you might want to look into all Texas A&M offers, their AAU status, their uh, research. They fit into the Big Ten pretty well, actually. Oh, yeah. Like, if we're taking the whole geographic and, and local culture all put aside and just looking at do they fit in the Big Ten, they fit the Big Ten. You know, they could maybe lose the Yell, Yell guys and fit in a little bit more. But, I mean, as an institution, academically, research, money, uh, everything about Texas A&M fits into the Big Ten. It's just, you know, culturally, do they? And would they want to? Uh, Rock and Rant says, I'm not saying anything. I'm saying that's the rules. Gotcha. We gotcha. I mean, that's... And, it, and it's trying to take that a step further for folks who are watching and about how that could play out and how that affects things. And there was a lot of talk in the past about how they needed whatever, 10, 12 votes or whatever that Miami would have had to have voted. Well, based upon what you're saying, Rock, less schools would have had to vote. And that would fall under definitely all the schools that are going to have to stick behind them alone could have passed that if you're right. Uh, boys, you can only take one, Kansas or Utah, for the Big Ten, Kansas. I'd take Kansas because if I'm picking one out west, I'm taking ASU. Nothing against Utah. They are coming up. Salt Lake City is a city of the future. Um, that university has skyrocketed. So much respect. It's just – I'm biased, and you're asking me to take one. So I'm taking ASU out west. 
And uh, I saw between those two, that means Kansas. And Kansas could maybe have a good rivalry with Nebraska. There you go. Uh, w. Jason Spangler, Kansas has turned down the Big Ten, not inquired. According to Brett McMurphy, uh, they inquired most recently after Texas and Oklahoma left the Big 12. I I don't want to say he's wrong. I, I have not heard or seen anything that the Big Ten actually – Extended an invite and got turned. No, out. no, no. They never extended an invitation. If that's what I was, no, 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 no. He's saying Big Kansas 10. has turned down the Big Ten. I'm saying, yeah, that's maybe Kansas some casual conversation. Invited. They said they weren't interested, but I don't think that they were ever even like unofficially, like quietly, like, hey, I mean, there were, I had Kansas and Oklahoma as the two Big 12 teams that would come up to the Big Ten if the Big 12 got cut apart. But I don't think those talks ever got to the point where they were, like, actually saying, "Yeah, we're going to invite you." It was just right. Of, I know the last the talks that I remember were Kansas inquired after Texas and Oklahoma left the Big Twelve. Everybody was panicking, looking for a landing spot. Kansas did inquire with the Big Ten. I, I believe Iowa State inquired too. So, no, oh, I'm sure they have. Uh, they were AAU but, at the time, you know. They're still a great university. I mean, they're yeah. NASA ties, they're ag ties. I mean, it's. There's just a school that won't let them in. I mean, yeah, I've, I've heard Illinois, you know. Is the Magnificent Seven going to leave before June 3rd, to leave before June 30th, before Stanford, Cal, and SMU have voting rights? I don't know if they are, but that makes sense. I, I and I do think that everyone, and this, kind of taking a little chance here to slow down a little bit. I think everyone as a whole is fed up and tired and ready to move on from talking about CFP. Everyone who's involved, probably a bunch of them are taking vacations right now, but they're all going to be looking directly at the ACC to get this figured out, whether it's to solidify and be, you know, go forward with what you got. Or if it's to come up with some type of solution for who's going to leave and who's staying and how that's going to work out, I think that they all want that to happen this year. Because they, we, the last statements we've gotten we'll probably get about the CFP is that they are not in any hurry to get into figuring out how the actual tournament is going to look in 26. Now, if I was going to figure out that tournament, I'd probably want to know what the hell the ACC is going to be. You know, how do we, how do we, why would we assert, you know, if they're going to do AQ positions, why would we assert that now? Um, so, and I don't think they want this to drag out one or two or three years that they're going to want this to get figured out this year. So I'm expecting a lot of invisible pressure to be exerted on the ACC and on those schools to get this figured out this year. And that means probably before football season. So hang on that. That situation is going to heat up. So, like, as you're saying, then that way it can happen before Stanford, Cal, and SMU get votes. And that could definitely complicate the situation. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, with the ACC situation, we were, we're like, just this is like the hurricane has passed over with the college football playoff. We're in the eye of the hurricane right now. Everything's calm and like nothing's happening, but I have a feeling like the eye of the hurricane, we're just about ready to hit right back into the hurricane with the ACC and stuff's going to go flying fast and furious. Yeah. I, I, I don't think we're going to get much of a break to be honest. I think like what you're saying, we've there, everyone's going to be watching what's going on with the courts this coming week. Um, depending upon that, the next week or two after that, I think we're going to start to see pressure exerted. We're going to start to see leaks come out. Um, things are things are going to pick up. Oh, why won't you? There we go. Uh, Jose, yeah, for recruiting purposes, it would be nice to land grab Florida and have Florida State, Miami, and tap into that five star rich area. Ohio State doesn't need it but the other big schools would benefit from that pipeline. Absolutely. Plus, there's a lot of Big Ten um, alumni 
and, and supporters down there that live at least part of the year down there. So, and that's the time of year when many of them are going to be down there. So you, I think Miami home games would actually get more people there watching them than they get now in the ACC. Um, and of course, Florida State would, ha- would have some there. So uh, yeah, I definitely think that that would be a great grab. I also think that Florida State, Georgia Tech, and getting yourself into two of those states is even better. But Miami does help you with South Florida. Yeah, I, I think locking down Florida and preventing Notre Dame from having a Florida game is very important. So uh, one more step to ch- choking out the leprechaun. Happy St. Patrick's Day, by the way. Uh, speaking of St. Patrick's Day, we got a green notification. Rock and Rant has gifted a membership to the College you, Football Rock Mafia. Winner. That makes you a winner. The runner-up was actually gifted a membership. <laughs> uh, nice talk about perfect works. timing. Runner-up. Uh, make sure you thank Rock and Rant for that membership. And if you uh, want to, you can go run over to the member section and catch Georgia Tech to the Big Ten. Or vote in the poll for the next Wild Ute University. I'm going to leave that poll up till Tuesday, guys. If you haven't voted, vote soon. Otherwise, you know, Ute's going to start working. I guess the runner-up got first place this time. Yeah, the runner-up won. The runner-up was the winner. The winner was Rock and Rant, but he gifted it to the runner-up. Thank you, Rock and Rant. Appreciate it. Uh, James Smith, what everybody is missing, someone has to lose and win. It's absolutely true. Got to have winners and losers. And he's that. That's part of why when, when people say, "Well, how? Why is that team worth it?" or Whatever. Well, as long as they provide value in other ways, like with Kansas, well, you know, you, arguably the the top basketball program in the country. Um, you you could look at their basketball and their football with their expanding their stadium, um, all their facilities. Uh, as, a, as a university, it's a good fit. Uh, brings you into, while people don't think of Kansas as a high population state, I would consider it a high uh, viewing state, like a high percentage of the people there are going to view those sports. So I, I think that they're a good addition. And there would be some other teams that I would also count among that number where you, you might not think of them as a winning program, but that's okay. Um, that might not be the role you need them to fill. Ed Lamox, do you think ESPN wants to lose Florida State to the Big Ten? I don't think ESPN really actually wants the ACC to break apart. I think they wouldn't mind paying them less. Um, I think they wouldn't mind getting rid of the ACC network. If a cost of doing that is losing Florida State to the Big Ten, I think they'll be okay with it. I don't think they're going to like it. Um, but at the same time, when you really get down to nuts and bolts and numbers, I, maybe they look at Florida State going to the SEC as a bad thing. You know, too many brands causes other brands to get hurt. Uh, they just added Texas and Oklahoma. So as far as ESPN is concerned, they might not actually want them there. I don't know you'd have to get in there and actually have talks with the people who make those decisions to see what they value and, and the parameters. All right, folks, let's take care of a little business. We're at the top of the hour here. Uh, if we've got a hundred people watching, uh, if you guys could please subscribe and like the stream that helps us out tremendously. It costs you nothing. Um, helps boost us in the algorithm. If you're looking to offer some financial support, you can click the little cash icon down in the bottom. Leave us a super chat. We answer all super chats or become a member or gift a membership to the community like Rock and Rant has done. Uh, membership gives you gives you emotes in the chat, access to the members area only for special polls, and access to Wild U University. And we have even more things coming down the pipeline. So, uh, And I won't mention it again. All right. The AM Big Ten thing is AM going to be okay being a little brother again in the SEC and for how long? Well, they're going to be there to, right. until the media deal ends, until the grant of rights ends. I mean, 
Yeah, and with Texas coming in being so strong right now, and with Texas A&M kind of being on shaky ground, kind of got to wonder a little bit how they're how they're feeling about this. Um, there's more to being in the SEC than just being Texas's little brother. Um, you know, locally, regionally, it's much more relevant, obviously. Um, and and if you go to join the Big Ten. Look, Texas has already been peeled wide open. They're being peeled wide open by the SEC for getting in there and recruiting. If if as AM, if you go to the Big Ten, look, everyone else is gonna start using you to to jump into Texas too. So there's a lot to weigh in this. Um but yeah, that that might be the thing that pushes them. And clearly Texas AM loves to throw around its money in in at least somewhat emotional ways. You know, you look at some of the decisions they make and go, what were you thinking? I tend to think that, you know, if you've ever known some extremely wealthy people who don't always make great decisions with their money, and it's we call it FU money, um, that might be the type of move they do. The old FU money. Uh, Dan Miter, is Kansas really worth $75 million? Their football has just become relevant. Basketball seems to be going the other way. I, I mean... Their basketball program is always going to be able to turn it around, I think. I think they pride themselves enough where they'll get that ship righted. Uh, the football, they're building a new football stadium. Um, are you going to pay them $75 million? No, you're not. You're going to pay them a reduced share the same way you pay Washington and Oregon. Uh, you're going to be at a reduced share for the length of a media deal, whether that's this media deal or next media deal. To me, it's it's... We're looking at it from the you know how how we look at additions right now. That's why I don't have Kansas on my list right now because no, I don't think so. Um, when I would have Kansas on my list is once we have governance figured out, new rules, maybe we have ourselves a conference playoff tournament that goes into a different style of postseason at that point in time with divisions. Mm-hmm. That's when I think Kansas becomes more valuable because now geography is going to matter at that point in time. And if, if you need to add something to the West End over here, I mean, you're basically looking at either Kansas or Colorado. Take your pick. I think Kansas is probably the better fit. And they're certainly going forward, making a lot of investments. Um, and, you know, with basketball being the upside. So I, I think in that next future realignment phase i think kansas's value goes up and i think that there's some other money makers that'll be involved that won't make it so much about are they worth the the tv payout as it is right now sorry i was looking something up here for somebody um the sec exit fee is 30 million with a two-year notice Uh, Timothy Green, I have a question. What team out of Virginia do you possibly think could go to the SEC? I think Virginia, if North Carolina gets them in. Um, Virginia, if the SEC wants to get into the state of Virginia and they're still kind of heavily focused on improving the way they're looked at academically. Um, if UNC uses their their past to get in North Carolina state and the SEC still wants to go to Virginia, they might pick Virginia tech. It's much, it's a much more SEC like school. I think that there's more money like from the, from the networks for that. It's a better atmosphere to, if you're actually going to put it on TV, a, a Virginia tech home game, say like Alabama's coming to town. You're like, we really need to get that one on there. Virginia tech's going to have a better show than Virginia is like, it's just, it's going to be better. You're, you're going to get to start off and show the, the entrances, the inner Sandman and, and everything about those games. That's better than Virginia. So could be the one depending upon how this plays out. Tony Lawson wants FSU and Clemson have Atlanta surrounded. It's true. That is true. And probably as of right now, Clemson is a little bit more um, 
respected. Like if you're just trying to get general fans in Atlanta to pay attention, you could argue that Clemson's the better pick, at least for now, over Georgia Tech. Absolutely. Plus, now they got the brand new value that's put around their shoulders over the CFP. Um, I think Clemson's realignment value just got up. So, Tony, we might be in agreement right now that Florida Clemson is the best addition for the Big Ten as of right now. Uh, Clay Johansson, I think Miami and Arizona school would be great for snowbirds going south. My snowbirds in Michigan leave September to November more sooner than later. It's true. The Big Ten fans travel too. I mean, you got snowbirds, you got traveling fan bases. Yeah, right here. I don't know if people know with um, Arizona State, where it's basically right on the border with Scottsdale, where the university is. And Scottsdale is just full of resorts. So when people come down here, there's all kinds of choices for people to stay and things to do besides just the game. So folks can turn that into like a, a vacation weekend watch their team and then hang out in you know, 70 degree weather, sunny and 70 degrees in, in Arizona state with low humidity. So I, I definitely think that that's probably the play just because big 10 love Scottsdale. They, they have their spring meetings here. Uh, and then Scott white says, so Kansas would be yeah. just like Indiana in the big 10. I don't know. I think they're, Basketball program's a little more storied than Indiana. Indiana's not spending money. Kansas is. Yeah. They're not going to upgrade the facilities at Indiana because they can't sell out their stadium as it is. So They have a decent stadium there. <laughs> they just don't sell. Yeah. They, I don't know about their facilities for their team. Um, I think they're okay. But uh, Kansas is just showing like all the moves required to show a school who really wants it. You know, they're, they're keeping their coach when others are coming, trying to pull them. You know, all the brand new investments. It's, um, I, I would put Kansas considerably above Indiana in that regard. Yeah. I, uh, Kansas upgrading their stadium was long overdue. It's a very positive development for sure. I agree. Yeah. I think uh, they realized realignments come in and they were running out of time. And then, Jason Spangler. I'm not sure how everyone keeps saying Kansas <laughs> is upgrading their stadium. Fair point. They knocked the whole thing down. There you go. <laughs> uh, well, that is an upgrade, though. <laughs> you knock it down. Upgrade to something nicer. Uh, James Smith, how long before the Big Two kicks out teams? Uh, from the Big Ten standpoint, and I know people hate when we say this immaculate, it's not going to happen for the Big Ten. Um, it's, it, these aren't just football leagues. Um, I get it. Fans get caught up in this talk, like relegation and all that stuff. These, these are not football leagues. These are sports conferences for highly touted, highly rated academic universities. Um, they, they do not look at these conferences and, and, and their membership in them as just about competitive football so no one's no one's getting kicked out anytime soon that that's going to require a vote and there's just no way they'd have enough votes to even do it no one's going to bring it up knowing that because now you're you're, you're just creating uh, a lot of bad vibes i guess we'll say i mean they don't they don't want to be out with everybody else so i just i don't see it even getting started talking about it let alone happening uh mh5 does the big 10 need more cannon fodder for their big time football programs i think that's a little little off base uh, but you do need to have some people you can't come in and like look you're not going to bring in alabama lsu georgia florida state and you know these teams and everybody's going to win this is why the super conference doesn't work you have to have teams that are down um or you have to in, in, enforce some kind of parity measure. There's a one lot of games. Other. Yep. There's a lot of games that don't get on TV that you don't see that happen that are very uneven. And those wins are counted upon to keep your top teams with high records and rankings because that's what happens with the rankings. If you don't, 
if you don't work that system as a conference, you're only hurting yourself because the others are. Um, so having teams that regularly get beat, it's not viewed as a bad thing. I mean, people talk about the Big Ten this way all the time. Yet, look how good the Big Ten is doing. Like it, it's part of the equation. I don't know how to say it any nice, more nicely that it's not just about having power programs. And for when people think about having like this one big league of nothing but power programs, I don't think they think about how these athletic departments actually raise money, most of the money, through so donations, big donations. And those go up and down based upon win totals. So if you go from being an 11 and 1, 10 to 9 and 3 team in the leagues as they are now, to being a 500 team or less, because now you're just in a, a league of power teams, watch your don donations dry up. They're not going to logically go, oh, well, I know it's because we're in a new league. No, you're just not exciting anymore because you're losing. You're not in the running for anything. These guys know this. So I, I think, you know, people are catching up. They're still trying to catch on to how the system works. But um, <laughs> they're not going to go jump to those leagues because it's going to kill donations for some of these schools. Uh, I take umbrage with this. Kansas football would be a top five program in the Big Ten. I don't think so. Well, he's definitely a big fan of Kansas, and that's he's okay. a big fan of Kansas. I I think it's a stretch to go top five program. I mean, you got Ohio State, Penn State, State USC, State. Oregon. I won't say Nebraska, um, Iowa, Wisconsin, Wisconsin. No. Depends on what Michigan State turns around to be. It would oh, be rough for him. It'd Maryland. be rough for him. Maryland, yeah, Maryland's been a Washington. fantastic team since last I mean, took over. That could be years where Kansas gets to that, no doubt. But when you say that they're a top five program, you're saying perennially, and I, I don't think that'd be the case. Yeah, they would need definitely a superstar kind of deal to to do that. I think. Yeah, they'll be they'll be like Iowa. You build up for those moments, and then you rebuild. <laughs> It's just the reality. That's what Nebraska you, has to do. You build up for those moments and then realize you need an offense. Yeah. Um, Mr. Just, Monkey says, Kansas basketball just won the national championship year before last, and they are going the other way. Yeah, I, Kansas is always going to write the ship yeah, on basketball. Yeah, they're fine. They're a basketball school. They always will be. No matter what they're doing with the football stadium, they'll still be a basketball school. You can You can pack a team full of stars, and then sometimes it just doesn't click. They don't click well together. I mean, basketball is all about like five guys out there working kind of together and in harmony. And sometimes, even if they're a bunch of studs, they don't work together. Sometimes you're gonna have too many stars on the team. That works against you too. Uh, Immaculate, have you been to a Sun Devils hockey game at the rink? It looks nice on TV. I'm sure it does, and no, I have not because I am just not a hockey fan. He doesn't want to sit in a cold rink for three hours for a tie game. Yeah. Like, are they fighting yet? No. All right. Wake me up when it's over. Uh, Jamie Thornton. Sorry, you guys had to run out. From what I was told today, Virginia could save the ACC. They are not going anywhere, I was told. This is why I was told Clemson got the wink nod from SEC this week, along with the University of North Carolina. Well, if that's true, I'm – leaning a little bit more into what I've been thinking and about who might be coming because Virginia definitely fits in with that. And they give them a little bit more of that state university cover fire, you know, as we have um, employment issues, unionization issues, Northwestern, they lost their NLRB case in 2014, but they won their appeal based upon being a part of uh, the state university conference of the big 10. Um, so, you know, if, if Virginia got word like, hey, stick around, they as a as a as a public university, they'd fit in pretty well with a, a stellar listing of private universities. So, yeah, that might be the case. They've, they've been quiet, haven't they? I mean, have you heard anything? Right. Well, this is she's, she's got a follow up. Yeah. Uh, Virginia president is very loyal and a great friend with Jim Phillips. They are still singing the praise of the ACC. I don't know how much the Big Ten would really want Virginia with having Maryland. Unless they're bringing North Carolina with them, they're not going to be interested. Yeah, that's a North Carolina like 
you got to bring them with us in order for us to come. And then Big Ten back, like, yeah, okay, we'll make it work. Um, but without North Carolina, if they're going SEC, no, not happening. Uh, Rock and Ran, after Indiana Hoops, next most valuable sport is Townie Cycling on the Trap from Breaking Away movie. I don't know what the second most popular sport is in Indiana. I really don't. No um, idea. I, I assume it's probably football. I assume probably football, but who knows? I mean, Indiana, like, people may think it's funny, but they could be good at football if they would just want to be. But I don't think they want to be. I think they like their role. They're supposed to be good in basketball, and that's always what they were. They'd be great in basketball, and then they'd play their role in football. And right now, they're not doing either. Well, yeah. I mean, they're losing in football. so they're doing But they got the Liberty coach. We'll see how well he does there. Yeah. He he's... says he's all about the winning. We'll see. There's lots of talk of our first year coach. Uh, Indiana is storied, but they haven't done much for three decades. You're right. Absolutely right. They haven't done much since Bob Knight went away. Uh, Dan Miner, can you see the power two and possibly the Big 12 breakaway in football and basketball once all the realignment is done and we have 20 plus team conferences? Um, you know, I, I, the only time when I've ever said maybe is when we're talking so far out in the future, I do not think that it at all is part of this phase. Um, and you know, if you try to explain like things that are going on with the CFP in terms of a negotiation, because people see like these extreme talking points and they think that's what's happening. It's like, no. These are talking points. These are sides in a in an argument of negotiation. You don't start at what you want to be or what you want to do. You go much more extreme than that in hopes to come down to where you want to be. Um, they're, they're, they're not doing any of this breakaway stuff. And in terms of the money, um, that's, in my opinion, all that talk is meant to pressure the NCAA. Um you know, if they were to break away and leave, it would screw the NCA. So to me, it's not about them actually wanting to do what you're saying there. That's pressure on the NCAA, just like it was in 2014. All right. I I tend to agree that it's just it's going to be a pressure move. It's about getting autonomous control of the uh, entire thing. Yeah, they, they need to, they need to be able to make rules quickly and kind of reactively to to all this stuff that's coming because they don't really know where all this is going to go. No one does. We're looking at a situation that's completely unprecedented. And you just, you have to be able to react accordingly and quickly. And so the NCAA just can't do that. Uh, Jamie Thornton, thank you, Immaculate. These are educational institutions. Mm -hmm. The insanity of relegation in college athletics is much. Hashtag preach it. We all get caught up into it and have fun with it. And so I get it. Well, people go to that point of relegation or kicking schools out and all this stuff. But, you know, sometimes we just got to remind people about what these institutions actually are and what their presidents or who make the decisions are actually thinking about and focused on. And it's not, it's not like, Hey, uh, Indiana, how, what, what the hell is up with your football team? I mean, that that's, Nowhere near one of the first things the presidents are going to talk about when they call up and talk to each other. Like they've they've got many more problems that are much bigger than that that are worth a lot more money than that. Like this is, but this is what a lot of these people are focused on is sports, and they don't think about the rest of it. So it's they think in terms of they're they're going to make decisions just about the sports, and that's that's not the case. Uh, rock and Ramp, Virginia does not bring D.C. any more than Maryland and all the other national alumni groups. People keep acting like none of Virginia or North Carolina get the SEC or big networks. Tons of systems already do. Yeah. They do, but if you've got a team within the conference, you get a local carriage fee, which is substantially more than an out-of-market carriage fee. And those those still apply. But we are starting to get to the point now where I'm sure they're probably starting to wonder is um, that value and, and what it's been part of the equation in the past, is that starting to get smaller? Um, you know, Big Ten Network, are we going to have to to figure out a way to stream that thing? 
is is its place in cable markets becoming a little less valuable? I don't know. What do you think about that, Moen? I mean, no, we... because I mean, look, the the cable system is not going away. It's just rebranding. No, itself. I know it is absolutely. Uh, but you're gonna like, find it on YouTube TV. Yeah, yeah. I think if anything, you're gonna probably increase it by offering it a la carte to these streaming services, uh, YouTube TV, Hulu Sports, uh, Sling, Fubo. Um, and all these other media parts, and it'll be part of that deal with ESPN and uh, Fox and Warner Brothers Discovery. It'll be part of those channels offered. So um, you're not going to get the same carriage fee you used to get, but you're going to get a higher carriage fee because of the availability. I think. I think anyway. I think you know, mm -hmm. YouTube TV is a national cable service. Basically, it's a cable yeah. service nationally. So. <laughs> That's kind of where I think it's going. I mean, I'm not talking about it disappearing out of the equation. I just mean, if say your locale and, and getting that local boost, if it was like 20% of the equation in the past, it might be down to like 15%. I'm not saying it's gone away. It's just, it's decreased a little bit. Like getting into Virginia versus one of those, with one of those schools, even if they didn't have Maryland, I, it's not quite the same thing as that it used to be um in terms of preparing for the future it's, it's still valuable now but i don't know how long you know 10 or 20 years from now what that what that value will be uh jimmy thornton and they want to be an acc school or somewhere that academics rule like the ivy this is probably going to stop the sec expansion at 18 if unc clemson come to the sec i agree yeah, if UNC can break away, I mean, that's one of those situations where, like, a UNC Clemson, maybe they do have to bring North Carolina State. And that's when I could see the SEC doing something a little unorthodox, like going after Kansas to fill out a four team. Because now you've, you, you did what you had to do by bringing in North Carolina State. Um, you got Clemson, which their value has been increased based upon these new CFP valuations. And then you get yourself in a brand new state with a brand new rivalry of Kansas. So that that's one of those situations where I start to start to rub my chin about Kansas a little bit. Yeah, I think if they I, I think if they get those two, they stop at 18. I don't think yeah. that there's any value in them going to 20 with Virginia and Kansas. Um, I just don't see any value add there. No, and I mean, like, the only way – I think that they'd more likely to go past this if um, they couldn't break away North Carolina. If they could take North Carolina, Carolina State. State. Right. Yeah. I'm not – the Virginia thing, I, I, I think that that might actually be passed. I think we would have heard if Virginia was about this at all. I mean, all that we've ever seen is this has more to do with North Carolina and North Carolina State. Right. Than it does North Carolina and Virginia. Yeah, but I think, I think UNC is going to be able to break away from North Carolina State. I don't the think longer this goes, hold. probably the yeah. better chances of that. I don't think that's going to hold. Uh, Kansas, MH5, Kansas is one of the winning ice programs. Top two, Indiana is number 10. The numbers are not close, just saying Kansas is pretty good. I agree. Kansas is a basketball school, and they will right the ship. Um, I think they're a number five seed, number four or five seed this year. So we shall see. Guys, we got about... 10 to 15 minutes left. If you guys want to get any questions in here, now would be the time. Uh, we'll do them rapid fire if we can. I will just run through here and we'll answer pop-up questions and give quick answers. Uh, if you want to ensure that your message is read, we defer to members' messages or you can leave a super chat. So, uh, Expedition Greg made it in. Good to see you, Expedition Greg. There he is. Go Bucks. Uh, that's what I thought. I could certainly see Virginia ending up in a new Ivy League that Immaculate has talked about with Duke, Stanford, and others. That's like a double win for them. I mean, Virginia basically is kind of like a private university, but with some of the benefits of being public, and it could provide them some cover fire, while at the same time not feeling like you're – putting up with a public university that doesn't belong, like say you're the Ivy coming into town. I don't think that they'd have any problem at all partnering up with Virginia 
partnering up with California, partnering up with Pitt. Um, I think those are the type of public schools that they wouldn't mind being together with when you consider that might get them the same cover fire that Northwestern gets from the Big Ten. Very good. Uh, Illini Ted, according to Kenzano, the Pac-2 is going to have something done to rebuild that conference by the end of June. I mean, okay. Yeah, I don't know what they could do uh, other than reverse merge with Mountain West. And there's been, like, talks about not doing Like, yeah, they would have to take the whole thing, though. Yeah, they'd have to take the entire like, Mountain West. The, the cost of splitting it up based upon their agreement with the Mountain West is prohibitive to actually breaking it yeah. apart. So, yeah, I don't know. That's 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 one of those things where there's a lot of different opinions, and they're all viable. We'll just have to kind of see which way this starts to go. Well, you never know. By the time June rolls around, if the ACC comes calling, they might not uh, rebuild that conference after all. Tony Lawson, Indiana has won eight national championships in men's soccer. So there you go. That's the number two sport at Indiana soccer. I had no idea. <laughs> well, good for them. I mean, got to have something you hang your hat on. Uh, I'd love annual KU Indiana games. I respect Indiana a lot. Well, uh, Kansas could have a peach basket and Indiana could have a chair in honor of Bobby Knight. Well, if Kansas ever joins, Kansas, if you can get Indiana playing better, we'd really appreciate it. Yeah, no kidding. Yep. Bring back Bobby Knight from the dead to coach Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the days. Uh, agreed, Mr. Monkey says. I'd love more of those matchups in basketball. I'd love to have a Big Ten, Big 12 challenge. I don't see why we can't. Uh, and then Mr. Monkey says, what about you? Coy says, what about UCLA? Yeah, UCLA has their own things to work. Uh, nice. Yeah, you recently, so many hires make you scratch your head. Ohio State could start improving, and NIL should help them. I don't have a problem with Diebler getting promoted to head coach. I have a problem with a five-year deal. I think it should have been a three-year deal. Um Blowing that lead against uh, Illinois the other night showed me they have a lot of growing up to do. Uh, for sure, Immaculate, and that's what I was told when they would get Kansas, they would be an add-on school for the SEC, so 100% on Kansas if they have to take North Carolina yep. State. Yep, and that, and that makes sense where you're trying to figure out, okay, how does four work? Um, yeah. That I don't think they want NC State, but if I do think that they're going to be in a time crunch, like they don't they don't have forever to make this work, and if the North Carolina Board of Governors holds out long enough, maybe ESPN and SEC are just like, all right, fuck it, let's let's yeah. grab them, and then you know, yeah, Kansas could make that work. Like I said, if that if the Big Ten catches wind of that. And Kansas is somewhere on the list in their future look, and just like how Oregon and Washington were for the future, and then they had to move it up more quickly based upon the way things were going. You might see Kansas all of a sudden become this battled for property, and then people would say, "Well, why? They're not worth it." Well, this is what happens when demand is greater than supply. Can you imagine the North and the South fighting for Kansas? <laughs> I mean, that's history that, that, repeats it could itself. Come to that. History repeats itself. Uh, Shonsky, my favorite BYU fan. When does the Big Ten stop? How many teams do they go up to? Because mm. I don't like, I don't see the Big Twelve going past twenty, and SEC going past eighteen. Are you guys going to have like twenty-five or twenty-six? Good question. Um, there's always going to be room for Notre Dame. You got to take that into account. There's always, I mean, if we go to 20 tomorrow with Florida State and Miami, Notre Dame would be number 21, 22, 23, 24. Um, so there's always going to be room for Notre Dame. Uh, boy, it, you know, it's hard to say. If they really don't want to get into the Texas market, I think they would stop at 21 or 22. If they need to get into the Texas market, they're going to have to go over that. 
Yeah, I'm a 20 guy right now. I don't I don't see it really going past 20 unless kind of like with the pack situation, if they kind of have their hand forced to to move on some schools sooner than they wanted to. I think they just want to get to 20 and see how things progress. Um, in terms of the big 12, I don't see any reason for them to go past 20 right away, but they might, and they certainly have more capability to do so because they're only paying out, you know, 30 million and that, and that number might go up, but when you're paying out half than what the big 10 is, you actually have more capability to expand more quickly. Um, just because of the amount of content that they bring to their television partners at that cost, you know, in terms of content, that's content is king. You can sell a lot of ads. So um, I, the big 12 might go past 20 more so than I think the big 10. All right. This is for you, Immaculate Joaquin Morales. How would you feel <laughs> about taking over for Michael? Dr. Michael Crow at ASU. Well, for all the shit we talk about, the sports side of things there, he has been pretty damn amazing on the other side. Um, what they've done on the research side, becoming not just credible, but a industry leader on the semiconductor research side, among other things. Um, that's a great one to be in because I know Ohio State's getting big into that. And that's a good school to have on your side when it comes to getting that vote to join, because that would be one hell of a partnership between those two schools. Um, so in terms of taking over for him, no way. I mean, he's as much as people talk trash about him, he's very highly thought of there on the academic side of things and what he's done for that school. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that job. I mean, replacing the AD maybe, but <laughs> I'm not qualified. You're not qualified. That doesn't matter. Neither is he. Yeah, he definitely wasn't. <laughs> uh, Virginia is a great example of what can be done and how well you're perceived simply by having powerful alumni. It's, That's the case with every school. Yeah. But, but yes. it's true. It's true to a point for them. Because you don't hear much about them. Now, granted, their basketball team has become a major power. Um, their football team has been growing and then they had the tragedy strike and that really kind of seemed to take all the wind out of their sails. But as a, as a school, they are quite powerful based upon um, some of their alumni and money and, and more importantly, influence. They're a big governmental influence school. Uh, Kansas and UNC would be such a huge improvement for SEC basketball mm. and the SEC network basketball content for new subscribers in Carolina and Kansas that the SEC would make major cash on. Not wrong. And I got to tell you, that Kansas-Missouri rivalry potential, I think people are sleeping on that. They're <laughs> Look, you want people to love something, but if you can't get them to love it, you want them to hate it. I mean, as long as people are paying attention. And there would be so much hate in that in-conference rivalry now that um, Missouri is doing well, very well in basketball, in football, and Kansas is coming along to build up. That could be a very big deal in that area. So I, I could definitely see the SEC and ESPN looking for ways to make money off of that. Uh, hey, Moe, and who OSU going to get to replace their running backs coach? Pepe Pearson's the name I've heard a lot. Uh, Scotty Graham out of Washington's the name I've heard a lot. So we'll have to see. I know everybody wanted Eddie George, but Eddie George is not uh, is not going to leave Tennessee State, unfortunately. Uh, Chips Act is big for ASU at the Semiconductor Act, yes. Uh, it benefited Ohio State as well. We've got that new plant coming in. Yeah, you guys got the 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 in house was it Intel that's up there? Or who? Yeah, Intel. And we have the 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 uh, the Taiwan company. They're they're building a massive complex. Like it's it's huge. If you ever see up in the north side of Phoenix and use Google View or something, 
zero in on how big that is. Last time I went by there and counted, I think I counted like 25 cranes. Um, so it, and ASU is directly tied into that. So that they're going to grow a lot. That is a massive industry that's coming to this country. People may not realize it. That's an entirely different discussion we won't dive into. But the money on that side of things, it's immeasurable. Um, we're, we're just starting to touch upon it. So ASU is, you're going to be hearing that name in the future more and more and more. And that's why I say, I think, I think Ohio State would definitely want them to join just for that partnership alone. They can already do that. But it just would be solidified even more if they had the full access through BTAA. Yeah, that Intel plant that Ohio State and University of Cincinnati are both working in conjunction on that. Yep. So, and as Kenda says, TSMC, if anyone knows, is the Taiwan semi semiconductor manufacturing company. It's pretty direct forward on the name, and you know they're they're building up over here because they're. <laughs> They think that at some point in time, the Chinese are coming. And so they're going to need a plant over here to take over all the production. Uh, people don't understand how fierce Kansas-Missouri rivalry is. I think these rivalries that are based on historical things are always somewhat extra fierce for one reason or another. So, uh, even though, Yeah, I, even though people don't talk about much, I'd put that like just in terms of just pure hatred. Yeah. I don't know, man. Top 10, top 5. Like it's... When you dive in with people from that area, Kansas, Missouri, and you say, "How much do you hate them?" Like they don't, they don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> it's it's just a different level of hate. I mean, it's different. Like you don't really want to compare it to Ohio State, Michigan, but I mean, no. Maybe, but I mean, it's the same. It's the same kind of heat. You know, they had this this event in history that started the entire rivalry. That you know. They still hold on to till today. Yeah, those those family blood ties. They don't they don't forget that stuff. Uh, Shonsky says he remembers back in 85, 86 time period. Maybe eighty seven wouldn't BYU knocked Eddie George out of the game. Uh, you're gonna have to jump up a few years. Eddie George was not playing back then. It was been about his time would have been. I think he won the Heisman in ninety five. So. 95, 94, 93 time frame is when Eddie George. We might have lost Mo and he'll be back here in just one second, folks. He's been having a little bit of issue with his internet. But, um, all right, my um, internet pooped on me a little bit. You're back. All right. There we All go. Right. Yeah. I would love the Kansas Missouri rivalry back, and the SEC is built on that. Okay. I don't disagree. Uh, Kansas hates Missouri. They don't consider it a rivalry. Missouri <laughs> never wins. Okay. Uh, I don't know if we have any Missouri fans in the chat. Never really see any. Um, maybe we have some who watch quietly and want to speak up that's okay i know we got a lot of kansas fans in here so maybe they don't want to stir that nest but um i'd, I'd say like if kansas gets into the sec now um, missouri's tough uh i don't necessarily think you guys are getting the best of missouri right away we'll see but that would be a good game All right, there's a pig on the back mm. of all milk curtains <laughs> in Iowa. I think Tony, you know what Tony, that pig Tony. looks like. Tony, Tony, Tony. That's okay. Uh, we, it's, it's, it's not missing. It's borrowed for a year. Uh, KU, Missouri history. People died. Whole towns got burned to the ground. It was an intense history. That carried out on the gridiron. That's the same reason Ohio State and Michigan have such a rivalry. The war for Toledo. Unfortunately, we won that and had to take Toledo. And they got the Upper Peninsula and all the minerals that go with it. So, But yeah, I think the rivalries that come from historical events tend to be the fiercest rivalries. Yeah, that, that's just another level of things. Like I don't think most 
sports fans realize how much that plays in. And it's, uh, I, I think that there's strong value there. Uh, Shonsky lets us know the holy word is the same way. Hatred. My wife used to have to go to her parents for a week. It was that bad. <laughs> Jeez. That's, that's sounds like that's, maybe a, a small problem, but hey, yeah, if you're still together, then okay, we're good. Yeah, that's an intense rivalry. You got to stay somewhere else for a week. Oof. Uh, awesome at Tony Lawson. Maybe I'm an Iowa fan and I don't even know it. Oh, wait, they never score. Forget that. LOL. Boy, just getting beat up here. Look, they fired him. They fired him. They hired a new guy. Nope. This, those comments, they're perfectly fine, but I just sit there and, you know, let that chip sit on my shoulder right here. Yeah, we got ourselves an OC. He's got an entirely different offense coming in and while I, I certainly understand why folks think that Ferentz isn't aren't, isn't going to let that guy do everything he wants to do, look, Ferentz gets it. He just had his son fired out from underneath him in the middle of a season. I think he gets it. There you go. All right, guys. I think we're going to wrap it up here tonight for this episode of Moan After Dark. I want to thank you all for joining us. Uh, a couple things I want to remind you of. I've pinned that message in the chat for the. Uh, basketball bracket, if you guys want to participate in that, I will also make a community post after the show's over. Uh, password on that is Mafia. Um, if you're a member, and we highly encourage everybody to become a member, uh, there's a poll up in the members-only section for what the next Wild U University is going to be about. Uh, when I checked this afternoon, it looked like Oregon State, Washington State, how they fit in the Big 12 was winning, but Louisville was running a close second. So if you're a member, go over there to vote. Don't forget to vote on that. And we will see you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Big West Mafia at 8 p.m. I'm going to be a special guest on Big West Mafia tomorrow with Sergeant Pickles and Becky Go Huskies. And then we will see you again on Tuesday for the Big 12 Mafia show with Immaculate, myself, Nate, and Bomber. Uh, you have any other final words you want to say before we split Immaculate? Um, thank goodness we're not going to be talking about the CFP this week, and hopefully we get some big news coming out of the ACC. So we'll uh, keep an eye on us, folks, and we'll be talking with you soon this week. That's right. ACC 24-7 coming to you soon right here on the College Football Mafia Network. Uh, and take care. Peace out. Adios.